Hello, I'm Jeff Zwerink, and welcome again to Give and Take. This is the segment of our show where we look at neat and fascinating scientific discoveries to help you be more confident in the truth of Christianity so that you can share your faith more confidently. Today, I'm joined by my colleague and good friend, Fuzz Rana, and we're going to be looking at the question, are humans and Neanderthals the same or not? Fuzz, good to have you here again today. Jeff? So this is something, uh, you know, I think just the idea of Neanderthals, these human-like, human-looking creatures that exist in the fossil record, mm. they just kind of create a lot of interest and confusion. I know that there are people who want to make them look more human, others that look different. So why is it that some people want to have humans and Neanderthals be the same? Yeah, well, if you look at scientists that are looking at the origin of humanity in evolutionary terms, uh, they have an interest in making Neanderthals, if you will, like us, uh, because it essentially undermines the concept called human exceptionalism. Mm. So in other words, uh, many uh, anthropologists really battle against the idea that somehow human beings are exceptional, that somehow we stand apart, that we're superior to other creatures. And so if Neanderthals can be like us, then that kind of knocks us off of our pedestal, if you will, and makes us just like other creatures that exist on Earth. So, so the idea is that we're different, but they're kind of similar. It's just a, almost a difference of degree, maybe, not of kind, whereas right. exceptionalism would make us different in kind, if you will. That's, that's exactly right. And so the idea would be, uh, from an, an evolutionary standpoint, many people believe that humans and Neanderthals shared a common ancestor, and that the, there are two lineages that diverge, mm -hmm. Neanderthal, one culminating with Neanderthals, one culminating with humans. So evolutionary biologists don't think of Neanderthals as our direct evolutionary ancestor, okay. but as a side branch, but they argue that they were just like us, and so therefore that capacity that makes us human probably already existed mm -hmm. in our, our, the shared ancestor, and so this, these qualities that make us seemingly stand apart actually are just have their antecedents in this evolutionary mm -hmm. history. And so it really represents, I think, a, a very real challenge to the biblical idea that human beings bear God's image, that we are unique, that we stand apart as the crown of creation from other creatures. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really what's at stake. Okay. You know, it, it's interesting you mentioned that because there are actually other creationists, people like us who would believe that God intervenes and creates the various organisms who would also want to blur that line between Neanderthals and humanity. Uh, what, what's your assessment of what's going on there? Yeah, well, in, in the case of uh, our friends who are young earth creationists, many of them actually see Neanderthals as essentially uh, a subspecies of humans, that they're mm. just, they are descendants from Adam, just like modern humans are. Uh, and, so, and, so, so the variations we see would just be part of the variations we see in humanity. If right, you know. right. Now, I, I have a hard time embracing that view because I think Neanderthals are uh, anatomically different enough from humans that mm -hmm. you would consider them separate species. They're, the way they grew and developed from infanthood mm -hmm. to adulthood is very different than how modern humans grow and develop. And there's even significant genetic differences okay. that we see. So I think you're justified in viewing Neanderthals as a separate species. Now, at reasons to believe, as old earth creationists, we would say these clearly are creatures that existed, mm -hmm. but we would argue that they were creatures that, that lacked the image of God. They may have had some measure of intelligence, some emotional capacity, Obviously, like, some physical resemblance. Some to us, physical will, resemblance, yeah. but they also looked rather different from us okay. as well. There's some pronounced differences between humans and Neanderthals. Well, let's kind of explore that a little bit. What what are some of the things that look similar, and then what are some of the things that look different? And ultimately, I'm going to be asking, you know, does it weigh in that they're different or the same? But let's kind of explore those two well, topics. Well, I mean, ne you know, Neanderthals again are are humanoids, like okay. you know, so they have a similar body design and similar mm -hmm. body plan. But they tended to be, they tended to possess what's called a, 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 a hyperpolar body design. They had very, they had barrel shaped bodies, short limbs, they had uh, long noses, and, and this was all to allow them to survive under clo uh, cold climatic conditions. Okay. Uh, the, the barrel shaped body, the shorter limbs helped with heat retention, mm -hmm. the larger nasal uh, 
cavities allowed for cold air to warm up as okay. they breathed it in. So their, their design was ideally suited for a polar environment mm -hmm. uh, versus uh, modern humans that, that don't display those features to that degree or to that extent. So it seems like the physical, even though they, there are physical similarities, some, there's some marked physical differences. That, that's right. And, and, and one of them comes out in brain size. I know that right. as well, correct? Yeah, I mean, the Neanderthal skull is very different than ours. Mm -hmm. For example, they have a very large occipital bun, which is a region at the very base of the skull. Uh, they had a, a more elongated brain case, a pronounced mm -hmm. brow ridge. Their faces were not quite as flat as modern humans. Whereas modern humans have a, a globular skull, or skull is like a globe, okay. as opposed to being elongated. And that has profound significance in terms of brain capacity and, and brain structure. So what are some of those differences? Because that seems to be the place where I would expect the most differences between humans and Neanderthals anyway. So yeah. let's, let's flesh that well, out Well, I mean, the, the primary difference with, when the skull is globular is that the parietal lobe is much larger in humans. Where's the parietal lobe? It's it, this area of the brain. Okay. But it, it's it's the part of the brain that's involved in uh, the processing that you would need for math and language. It's hmm. involved in long-term and short-term or working memory. Uh, it plays a key role in hand-eye coordination, um, uh, things like that. It gives us our sense of self-awareness, a sense of self. It's the part of the brain that goes quiescent during religious experiences, meditation and prayer. So it's a, a really significant part of the brain that really separates humans from Neanderthals uh, in terms of, of capacities that we would possess that Neanderthals wouldn't possess. Well, and, and it strikes me that a lot of those capacities are related to our ability to worship, things that would be what you would characterize as being made in the image of God. That's right. I mean, our capacity for symbolism to... to formulate language, to mm -hmm. manipulate symbols uh, is, is required, sorry, requires a very large mm -hmm. parietal lobe. Um, uh, uh, our th uh, and, and so that would be a, uh, an example where we could see clearly see cognitive differences between humans and Neanderthals. Well, thanks, Fuzz. I appreciate your comments. Yeah. You know, when we look at the fossil record, we really do see some amazing creatures that God has put on this earth. And Neanderthals certainly fall into that class. They look a lot like humans, but as we investigate the details, we really do see that Neanderthals are very distinct from humanity. Or actually, I would turn that around. What we see when we look at the fossil record is that humanity is distinct from every creature that we see. We alone have the capacity to worship God. And as we look at the differences between the Neanderthal brains and the human brains, we see just exactly what we would expect if God is the creator of both. You know, I would encourage you to check out Fuzz's blog, Differences Between Neanderthals and Human Brains Show Human Exceptionalism, to get more details how you can use this discovery to tell others about how we relate to God.